the ego is all about, uh, you know, it comes under the same umbrella as identity and, you know, things like, you know, ideas such as, you know, who we think we are, um, the difference between I am and you are and, you know, all of these very, very deep questions that I, I, I don't necessarily think really begin to bother us. Uh, until kind of midlife or unless some kind of traumatic experience occurs and our understanding of who we are has to change. So like the death of a loved one or when, we, when we're when we fired or when something really, really um, ha- bad happens, you know, something really bad happens and we, we start to feel very volatile, you know, as, as it's kind of like the world that we thought we knew is no longer the way it actually is. And we have to, we have to move through that change or else go insane because we can no longer be who we once were. And you, you, you think of that idea, like for example, someone, you know, sustains a, a, an injury, you know, they're, they're driving in their car and, you know, they, 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 they hit the side of the road and, and they break their neck and, you know, they were a basketballer and now they, and they're obsessed with playing basketball. They've been obsessed ever since they were a child and they can't be a basketballer anymore because now they're a paraplegic. So their, their identity obviously will change, but the degree to which they are accepting of that identity changing is the degree to which they were attached to the identity of basketballer of who they were. So this is kind of what this, this, this podcast is, is all about. And I've been obsessed. That's my, uh, that's my little dog, Abby there. She's probably going to get annoyed because I haven't fed her yet, even though it's an hour and a half before dinner time. Um, anyway, this is what this podcast is all about. It's around the ego. And I have a little piece of writing here that I wanted to share with you. It's, uh, in part a, uh, analysis of what Eckhart Tolle was talking about on the, on his interview with Russell Brand recently. And you can actually see that in full on YouTube and, uh, here we go. So Eckhart Tolle spoke about the nature of the ego in an interview with Russell Brand. The ego can be thought of as many things. Some refer to it as arrogance made manifest, but it is deeper than that. Some say it is the thoughts in your head and it is, but it is more malleable than that. And we know this because our thoughts change all the time, at least the seemingly less significant ones. Abby, shush. Sorry guys. In any case, Tolle had this to say, let's say you are a room and you, the room, want to know, who am I? So you would say, well, there's this furniture here, there's the sofa and the chairs and the table, and there's the wall and the ceiling and the floor, and there's this and that. That's me. You describe yourself in terms of the content within you. And then you're asked, is there anything that you have missed that you are? No, you say, because you're looking for more content, but you have listed and said all the content. That's what I am. And then suddenly someone points out, haven't you missed the essence of who you are? And that's the space. It's the essence of you, the room. It's not the content within you. It's the space of the room. You had never been aware of that, that you're actually this space that can never be destroyed. It's actually timeless. And in this analogy, that space is the space of consciousness. So it's beyond the ego. It's, it's, it's deeper than the ego. You are not the content of your mind. And that is your form identity. <clears throat> so then I said... When we identify ourselves by our egos, and unfortunately this is not always a conscious decision, we derive our sense of self from something that isn't us. Tolley also said that the ego ultimately seeks some kind of superiority, compares itself to others, and that when we identify as our egos, we never meet our other individuals at all, only the constructs of our minds. What does this mean? It means that we have become who we think we need to be complete with moral superiority and social acceptance to not only be included, but be loved, whole, welcomed, and desired. Thoughts are projections. They are ideas about ways to grab or access what is, as Tolly would say, outside ourselves. Because if the room can only identify itself by comparative position, and that what it truly is in its entirety is timeless space, then we ourselves, removed from identification with the content, are that timeless space too. As Tolly says, the ego always needs some kind of antagonist because it defines itself by the other. That's the really important idea here, guys. The ego defines itself by the other. So I am 
who you think I think I am.